saya mulai ya, Sir. Ya, yeah, start. Yeah, start. Uh, good morning, Sir John and Sir Graham. Good morning, friends. Today, my group will be going to do a practical test. Uh, we have chosen the reading text, which is La La Land. But before that, I'm going to introduce you to my group first. Next slide, please. My group members consist of Angelica Handoyo, Fernanda Tiara, me, Gorsela Ardera, and Gustav Kalin. The first thing we're going to discuss is about what is a uh, review text. Review text is an evaluation of a publication such as movie, video games, musical competition, books, and etc. What is the purpose of the review text? Review text is used to predict the events of an artwork for the readers or listeners. And there are a few language features in a review text. Uh, the first one being Angelica. Oh, please go to the slide before. Uh, this part of the text discusses what we are going oh. to be explaining. Angelica. Uh, sorry. Uh, I'm going to repeat what I said. Uh, there are a few language features in a review text. Uh, the first one is they focus on specific participants, uh, such as the characters of the movie or the novels. And the second one, they use adjectives. Uh, the third one, they use long and complex clauses. And the last one, they use metaphors. And the next one is the generic structure of a review text. Uh, the first part is orientation. Uh, this part of the text discusses what we are going to be explaining or reviewing about. And for this part, we are going to review about La La Land. Uh, La La Land is a story of two struggling artists. And it's directed by Damien Chazelle. Uh, next. And the story is about uh, one actress uh, played by Emma Stone and another one is a jazz musician played by Ryan Gosling. Uh, in this story, uh, each of them appear to have, uh, appear to be ready to give up their beloved craft after years of disappointment and bills. And that is when they both meet each other and fall in love. Uh, however, their careers do take off and this leads us to wonder if they can make it together. After all, being a famous actress or musician isn't exactly a part-time work. The next one is evaluation. Uh, this part of the text mentions what our judgment on the object that we are reviewing. La La Land is a well-made, enjoyable movie, hiding so much about a breakthrough of the cinema work, revealing not just about the story, but the overall progress. The musicality this movie brought to its audience is able to immensely capture people's heart. Once the characters start singing and then dancing, the film makes it all so natural. How the scene, the scene doesn't make, feel made up, and how we can feel the sincerity as the character sings their heart out, both literally and metaphorically. However, in the end, it was disappointing to see that Mia and Sebastian didn't end up together, with Mia found herself as a successful married actress, and Sebastian reaching his dream to open a jazz bar. The two managed to achieve their biggest dream, but not so much about their love life, for one another, if only things could end up differently. And in my team opinion, the character development for Mia is not balanced with the male lead. While she discusses with Seb, who introduced her to classic movies that inspired her to pursue her dreams in Los Angeles. Aside from this, the character doesn't say a lot. Many people assess the movie is so much more concerned about Sebastian's career than Mia. So, 
While we can feel that Emma Stone did her best portraying Mia, it's still clear that the villain is much more invested in Gosling's character. Next is we have interpretative recount. This part of the text explains about the summary of the movie that we are reviewing, including characters and plot. Set in this seriate metropolis, in the metropolis of modern day Los Angeles, Mia, an aspiring actress, and Sebastian, a struggling jazz musician, trying to dress desperately to bring classical jazz back into the mainstream popularity, somehow got involved with each other and get their whole life and also their hopes and dreams intertwined. But just as the city brings them together, LA threatens to tear them apart. Stone and Gosling achieve their impossible here, revealing the brutality of showbiz while simultaneously romant romanticizing it. They are equal, equally matched in their ability to bring such emotional heart into their roles all while dancing and singing to wonderfully make choreo choreography. It's utterly joyful to watch, particularly Gosling, who is surprisingly quite a good dancer. The last one is the evaluative summation. This part of the text consists of the last opinion for the overall work. La La Land is daring, imaginative, and moving. It reinvents the Hollywood classic for a new age, creating the kind of the movie magic that sends you out of the cinema on a high. Even, even those among you who just cannot understand a musical will absolutely love this movie. It simply is just impossible not to fall in love with the whole picture and story. Even with the ending that disappoints most people, it's still a brilliant movie. So that's all about our presentation today. Thank you for listening. Do you have comment, Mr. John? Yeah. Not for this one. <laughs> okay. So, Mr. John, uh, I think yeah. that your group is do, leading, uh, doing this smoothly, yeah? It means no problem. Everything goes smoothly according to the structures that you have told uh, about the review text. Yeah, it's very good. Awesome. Okay, we go ahead to the next one. Um, let me show you the next group. Oh, one moment, yes, sir. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Good morning. Good morning, sir John, sir Bram, and friends. Today, our group will, will be presenting about nuclear energy. The reason why we chose this topic is due to the concern regarding the environment and the reason why we should shine a light on the importance of our environment. Next slide, please. What is nuclear power? Nuclear power is the use of nuclear reaction to produce electricity. Nuclear power can be obtained from nuclear fission nuclear decay, and nuclear fission reaction. Presently, the vast majority of electricity from nuclear power is produced by nuclear fission of uranium and plutonium in nuclear power plants. And next is nuclear energy. Nuclear energy is the energy released during nuclear fission or fusion, especially when used to generate electricity. Okay, and the next slide will be presented by Stephanie. of energy. One, thermal or also called heat energy 
Sama lagi is created from the federation of isms and local within society. The faster the movement, the stronger the energy. So chemical energy, chemical energy is stored in the bonds of isms and molecules. It is the energy that holds particles together. Particles together. Stored chemical energy is found in food, biomass, petroleum, and natural gas. Three. Nuclear energy. Nuclear energy is stored in nuclear in the nucleus system. This energy is released when the nuclei are combined or split up. Nuclear power plant split the nuclear or uranium atom to produce electricity. For Electrical energy. Electrical energy is the movement of an electron. Short explanation of what an electron is. The tiny particles that make up atoms along with protons and neutrons. Five, radiant are also known as light energy. Radiant energy is a type of kinetic energy that travels in waves. Examples include sun, x-ray, etc. Six, light energy. Light energy is a form of electromagnetic radiation. Light consists of photons, which are produced when an object atom heat up. Light travels in waves and is the only form of energy visible to the human eye. Seven is motion or also called mechanical energy. Motion energy is the energy stored in objects as objects move faster, more energy is stored. Eight, sun energy. Sun energy is the movement of energy through substances. Nine, elastic energy. Elastic energy is a form of potential energy that is stored in an elastic object, such as a coil, spring, or a string elastic band. Then, gravitational energy. Gravitational energy is a, a form of potential energy. It is an energy associated with gravity or gravitational force. Next. Why we still use regular call for energy? The reason we never truly stop using calls is market demand. Since the item is re requested, less the cheaper it gets. Next will be presented by Fernando Brasil. The advantage of nuclear power are it's one of the most low carbon energy sources. It also has one of the smallest carbon footprints. A carbon footprint is the total amount of greenhouse gases, including carbon dioxide and methane, that are generated by our action. It's one of the answer of the energy gap. It's essential to our response to climate change and greenhouse gas emissions, reliable and cost-effective. Disadvantage of nuclear power are there are many risks of accident, most notably the Chernobyl accident. The reactor was exploded, releasing a radioactive cloud over a large part of the Soviet Union. It is estimated hundreds of times more radioactivity was spread than either nuclear bomb dropped on Japan during World War II. Expensive initial cost to build. Three, radioactive waste for limited full supply. Five, impact on the environment mainly the body of water. During the cooling process, the water becomes contaminated with radionuclides, unstable atoms with ex excess energy and must be filtered to remove as many radionuclides as possible. The benefit of nuclear energy. Nuclear benefit for humans are NPP, or nuclear power plant. 
a thermal power station in which the heat source is a nuclear reactor creating heat water to produce steam. Two, nuclear is also useful for various industries. Nuclear energy can be used in various industrial applications, including seawater distillation and hydrogen production. Three, help maintain the quality and quantity of bird food, reducing the number of pests and bugs, protect crops, providing the world with more food. Irradiation also kills bacteria and other harmful organism organisms in food. This type of sterilization occurs without making food radioactive or significantly affecting the nutritional value. In fact, irradiation is the only way to kill bacteria in raw and frozen food effectively. A more power for a more powerful alternative power source because it, it's used less energy and it efficiency against climate change. Next will be presented by Felicia Giovanni. The summary why we should use nuclear energy. For thousands upon thousands of years, humans have been harnessing the power of nature to provide energy to push our civilization forward. By leveraging fire, we gain the ability to cook, provide warmth, shelter, and protection from predators. Later on, we tame a variety of animals, using their labor to perform tasks that would be too inefficient for humans. Eventually, natural power sources, like the wind, was harnessed through windmills to turn millstones, hence making grinding grain without any human input at all. Today, the world's energy needs are still dominantly met through these same processes, with non-renewable fossil fuels like coal, oil, and gas providing the dominant fraction of Earth's energy usage. We are powering a space-age civilization with the same fossil, fuel, fossil, fossil fuels that emerged during the Iron Age. Now more than ever, the world needs nuclear power, and yet fear rather than facts governs our policies. Here's the science of why we should embrace it. The way a conventional chemical-based power plant works is simple and straightforward. A fuel source of some variety is burned, releasing energy, which heats up and boils water, generating steam. That steam turns a turbine, which generates electricity, we use to provide power for whatever purposes are in demand downstream. The big problem we have, whether to admit it or not, is that this way of generating large amounts of energy has created enormous environmental problems. While the impact of extracting these raw materials in, in such enormous quantities is no doubt significant, the end products of combusting these fuel sources has fundamentally and significantly changed the chemical composition of Earth's atmosphere and oceans, leading to global warming, ocean acidification, and other climate-related effects. Yes, it's true that fission power plants, especially ones that cut corners, could lead to radioactivity-related disasters such as what infamously happened at Chernobyl in 1986, which was caused by a power plant meltdown. But in factual, it's actually seldom for a meltdown to happen. Nuclear energy would not admit dangerous gases into the atmosphere when it produces electricity. However, through the burning of coal, electricity is produced, but carbon dioxide, a dangerous greenhouse gas, is also produced. Unlike coal, nuclear energy would not produce carbon dioxide. It only produced water vapor. Many environmentalists have opposed nuclear power. Nuclear power can be and should be one major component of our rescue from a more risky form of energy. In conclusion, we should use nuclear power instead of other sources of energy because it can produce high levels of electricity without causing damage to our environment and atmosphere which of course is going to give positive impact to all of our well-being. Next slide. Thank you for listening to our presentation about the discussion of nuclear energy. Hope that we all could learn something from this presentation. I have a question, Felicia. Uh, what kind of text that you performed just now? A summary of what was explained. 
uh, we have learned about the kinds of facts, right? So this is included to what kind of facts? The, your, the first group tells uh, review of that, but your group is what kind of text? Oh, discussion text. Sorry. Oh, discussion text. Okay. Okay. Thank you, guys. Uh, Mr. John, can, do you have any comments for this group? Yeah. Uh, thank you, Sir Bram. Thank you for the second group. Yeah. Uh, actually, I saw, yeah, maybe this is the second part of this uh, group presentation, but uh, please. Uh, Relax, yeah, relax. Yeah, it looks like you read the text, but try to relax and do some, like you talk with your friends, yeah? Don't be so nervous or something, yeah? So this is not uh, a hard thing to do, yeah? Every day you meet me and Sir Bram in the same Zoom meeting. So it means that relax and do like you, uh, yeah? There is no burden in you, okay? Thank you. Uh, so uh, for the student who have uh, already- Once more, uh, once more. I will yeah, go. See. I will add, yeah. Yeah. Uh, although the discussion text is uh, a difficult, it's a difficult discussion, uh, the speaker who are presenting the material need to uh, need to make it uh, practical. Yeah, I mean, it means you have to explain it uh, easily to your audience because this is a hard discussion. So it's okay for you using your own words yeah well uh, we are i'm not we are not we are not actually um judging you but actually you are doing smooth you are going uh, i mean you are doing this very good and very well but next time uh please use your own words rather rather you are using the text yeah okay that's it mr john yeah sorry Excellent. Thank you, sir. Okay, I think Mr. John uh, wants to announce something, right? Okay, yeah. Uh, for the, uh, thank you, sir. Bram. For those students who already presented about this uh, presentation, you may leave this Zoom meeting, okay? So uh, that's for you. You have uh, free time to do something, yeah? Okay. Yeah, for, for uh, first group and second group, yeah, you may leave. Okay, okay. the first yeah, and the second you. group, you may leave the Zoom. Thank you, guys. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, thank you. yeah. bye. Thank you. Yeah, good. So the next third group, Carolina, Clarissa, Jennifer, Nikaela, yeah? Go. Okay, greeting Mr. Bram, Mr. John, and fellow friends. Have you ever imagined having a super rich Asian boyfriend and of the whole Singapore? This is what happened to Rachel. So today, we're gonna talk about Crazy Rich Asian Movie. Before we begin, let's meet our team members. There's Caroline, next slide please. There's Caroline, Clarissa, Jennifer, me, and Michelle. Next, the introduction about the movie will present by Michelle. So this is the movie poster. Briefly, Crazy Rich Asian is outrageously funny about the super rich Singaporean boyfriend who's bringing home his American-born Chinese girlfriend to the wedding of the season. What she doesn't know is, is that Nick's family is old money super rich. This movie was directed by John M. Chu from Crazy Rich Asian novel. In 2013, there was written by Kevin Kwan as a reference to adapt complete storyline in the form of movie. This movie also produced by SK Entertainment. Next, Clarissa will explain about the character. And now let's meet the characters of the movie. Here we have Nick Young. Rachel Chu, Michael Dio, Astrid Dio, Eleanor Young, and Fei I will explain about the thesis of the movie, but before that, let's take a look at this graphic. A little bit of visualization based problems on the film. Moving on, 
respond to the thesis. This analysis discusses how the social class that is contained in the crazy rich vision works and also its conflict on family life. In this thesis, the writer used social class differences and social conflict theory. This class difference is created because of the existence of social class, where they classify their social class, namely the upper and middle class, where the upper classes don't want to accept the middle class for the reason that they are seen as disgraceful. The difference in social class is measured by the power or wealth, privileges, and prestige that affect the position, lifestyle, habits, and behavior between the two classes so that the gap between them are so striking and conflicting. The conflict is the gap of social status in a family life or relationship. This gap affects the thinking of, of our families who cannot accept any class lower than to enter their families. Moving on to the next topic, which will be explained by my, Jen by my friend Jennifer. Okay, next I will explain about the quotation that we got from the movie. The first one was a very famous quotation that has been pretty viral in social media. What does Astrid Young say to her ex-husband? Let's watch the video. Yes, yeah, so what I want to highlight in the dialogue when Astrid say it was never my job to make you feel like a man, I can make you something you're not. So plot of this scene was Astrid and her husband has a social economic gap that his husband made a reason for him to cheat on her. This is a representation of a toxic relationship because of his insecurity. Next is the Mahjong sin. Personally, this is the most great sin in the movie, using Mahjong as a symbol of the tension between the character, Rachel and Eleanor. They are really into the game. In the beginning, Eleanor was confident and in control all through the game, while Rachel take more passive, but she has made every move very calculated. Rachel not only mastered Mahjong, but also got in a niche situation. Next slide, please. If you saw the video, you see Rachel on the mahjong block that I circle in the presentation. So in the game role, when you got the block, you could auto win the game with it. We think that block represent, represent about Nick as Rachel's girlfriend and her mom's son. But Rachel reviews it to Eleanor so she could win. But at the end, she also got the complete, so none of them are winning. It is exactly represent the situation. Lastly, the situation in the scene was Rachel as Eleanor watching her. And Eleanor answered that she will never be enough for the family. Personally, you would think that anyone now will never be enough in this fast-paced world. The knowledge you have now maybe will not relate it in the future. So it's important to be eager and long life a learner. Next, the conclusion will explain by Carol. Conclusion, do not give too much prejudice and pride in yourself because it will lead to an attitude of aggression that will harm yourself and your loved one. Just like the character of Eleanor Young, who is very proud of what she has done by dropping out of college just to support her husband's career and raise Nick by her own. All mother would do such a thing for the quality of the family, but from that quality comes a lot of thinking about being better than anyone, especially when someone enters the family life. And mother is naturally to worry about her child partner, like Rachel Chu, a pair who, who appear in Nick Young life, who indirectly also enter Eleanor life. As the cause of the attitude of aggression, that will make things that should not need to be done because it will lead to something worse. When Rachel gets bad treatment from Eleanor, she immediately show another side of herself to open Eleanor's eye and heart. So she doesn't she didn't think negatively about her. Later, Nick gave up his wealth just to live with Rachel, even though he was willing to leave his mother. Things like this often happen in life where a person will realize and give up 
on something that doesn't get a satisfactory result. This movie, this movie was rated with the score of 9.5 out of 10, which came from us. So the next slide will be explained by my friend, Nikiela. Okay, so I will explain our review about the movie and why we give that score. In today's average filmmakers make more films about fantasy, zombies, more toward technology evolving. In the movie, we represent the cultural diversity and social reality in the city state. But many think that the movie doesn't represent the real situation in Singapore, but gives a BS perspective of rich Chinese Singaporeans. Kwan stated that his intention in writing the novel was to introduce a contemporary Asia to a North American audience. He claimed the novel was loosely based on his own childhood in Singapore. So what we learn from this movie is celebrating successes and the hard work that has been put in to achieve them shouldn't be discounted. So it's also important to be humble. We can all agree that it should never come at the expense of undermining our abilities. Thank, this is the end of our presentation. Thank you. Hello, Mr. John. Could you stop? Oh, yes. Okay. Right, thank you for Carolina, Clarissa, Jennifer, Michaela. That's a uh, great job. Yeah, I think that you uh, present, yeah. Uh, in a relaxed way and what we got from the point of our score, uh, Rubik score, yeah, I got from that and that's, I really love that, the way you okay. present, yeah. It's <laughs> like I'm in, uh, Geneva, you're like, oh, presenting on TV, yeah. <laughs> Good. Okay, my evaluation <laughs> for Jennifer and friends, yeah. Uh, well, well, actually your group is the example, yeah, of how to make, the review becoming so easily uh, uh, being understood by others. Yeah, you're making, you're using your own words, making your own evaluation rather than you're copying from others. That's what actually I want. Yeah. Um. Okay. Um. One of the criteria in review text that you you have to use metaphor. I remember Jennifer just now used metaphor. Can you give, give us again the example, Jennifer? I'm sorry, sir. I think I have a, uh, my connection is kind of bad. Can you um, okay. repeat it or yeah. uh, typing okay. in the chat? Did you, did you, did you still remember actually when you are presented, when you presented this, uh, I, I heard that you are using uh, the metaphor. One of the criteria in uh, review text is using uh, using metaphor, right? So, what's the metaphor that you use? Did you still remember? Because I I I wrote down for you, but I would like you to tell to others what is it. You are mentioning about what kind of relationship. Jennifer, can you? Um, kind of relationship between the character. I yeah. know what you mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so basically, a, um, a family and also like their boyfriend and girlfriend. So yeah, partners. You well, actually, I I heard that you are making you're saying there is a toxic relationship, right? Oh yeah, they're also um the toxic. So it's a basic of family drama that have yeah. uh that um yeah that's also a lot of um relationship in that movie. Well, that's an example actually of a metaphor, whether you realize it or not, because toxic is not human value, a matter value, right? But relationship yeah. is not human, uh, human relationship. Well, that you use uh metaphoring yeah with why whether you realize it or not <laughs> okay good good job yeah for this group awesome yeah thank you sir 
All right, next group. Uh, can can they leave, Mr. John? Yeah, they may leave this room. Yeah. Uh, okay, thank, you thank you so much, you Carolina, Carolina, Clarissa, yeah. Jennifer. You may leave. Yeah, yeah. Thank you so much for great. But if you want to stay here, that's okay for us. Yeah. Yeah. It doesn't matter. Yeah. You may support your friends. Just give them some motivation or some support. Yeah. <laughs> okay. For the next, uh, Edward, Jasmine, and Leonard. Yeah. Ready? Hello. Edward, Jasmine, Leonard. Time is. Okay, sir. Uh, I will start sharing my screen now. Good. Oh, nice. Okay, good morning, everyone. Uh, good morning, Sir Bram, and good morning, Sir John. Uh, today on our practical test, me, Jasmine, Jaslyn, and Leonard will be talking about our review on an Indonesian film called Imperfect. Hope you enjoy. Uh, for the first for the first slide, we got addressing heavy issue in a warm way. The rise of bullying and body shaming, especially on social media, is considered by Mera and Ernest as the right moment to bring the book Imperfect to the big screen. The film with the full title Imperfect, Career, Love, and Scales is not simply a transfer of the book to the big screen, but as a means of communication and self-acceptance. Uh, interestingly, uh, to present a story that is close to reality, the character Rara was created who experienced bullying or body shaming from the surrounding environment. Yep, it's different from the book which tells about Mera's journey as a wife of Ernest Prakasa, which does not meet the expectation of netizens. Uh, for the next slide, we got Jesslyn. Hello, Jislin. Hello, sir. Okay. Uh, this film is full of comedy. Ernest Prakasa film which are always full of comedy as his signature actually make it a thought challenge in this film. You see, the heavy weight of the story and added comedy must be well carefully so as not to overload. Yep, this is also thought, a thought text of Muhatli Acho as a consultant for the comedy film Imperfect. In the film Imperfect, there are many good space for comedy. Acho, Mera, and Ernest must choose which part is safe. Such a joke as a jokes about body shaming. They don't talk about body shaming in the film, but rather describe the reality that is happening around that body shaming. A Joe detailed effort for his comedy bites have paid off. Unfortunately, some of the punchlines don't feel surprising anymore because they have been shown in the trailer. As if, as if the repetition, the humor that is present is not as laughable as the first time. It's not about antagonist. Sorry, it's it's not about antagonist or protagonist. Ernest doesn't place the character as either the protagonist or the antagonist. Yep, like humans who can be said to be good or bad. It all depends on the perspective and behavior. Rara, for example, she is willing to be bold, but after being able to change. Her character also changed Rara Mothers, who forbids her to eat chocolate every day. Turns out to have a trauma in the past that shaped her. Lulu, Rara's sister who looks perfect, turns out to be not different from suffering like Rara. Yep, the, the way Ernest treated the character is brilliant. Apart for Ernest, Acho, and Mira, who carry a heavy burden. Jessica Mila, who is believed to play Rara, also feels the same way. 
and similar positions in addition to having to increase her body weight up to 10 kilograms Mila also has to go through a makeup process for two hours every day to preset the figure of Rara like the one in the film Mila had worked rough successful when the tears poster and tears trailer were launched and invited positive comments for netizens. Rara imperfect figure was great to be a daily portrait of girl who often feel insecure and don't and don't know how to start loving themselves. Rara characters also represent the behavior of some girls in using social media. Comparing herself to others who looks perfect. Plus, because of her persecution, she is often expo- is exposed to verbal abuse from others. Fortunately, Jessica Mila managed to present the character of Rara as a place for girls to reflect in order to find the best version of herself. Next, Leo. Okay. Each character becomes prima donna in their respective scenes. The existence of four female boarding house characters at the house of Mrs. Rati, aka Mrs. Dika, makes the film imperfect uh, a play fresh. There are Neti, Maria, Rita, and Ida. Now, their presence is often awaited by the audience because they always manage to bring laughter. Then there is Eddie as Dika's friend, who also adds to this film even more tickling with Ellen's typical comedy about diversity. Now, there is also a gang village, a gang of village talks fronted by Ali. Although sometimes dry, the comedy hits the heart. Then there are office gangs who are fashionable and sometimes uh, absurd, also appear natural and real. Plus, the clumsy socialite gang, like the models we meet in everyday life. Oh yeah, don't forget the Rara Emergency School students who managed to slap, to slap us through their innocent chatter. Ernest's success, he puts all the characters to be excellent in every scene. Uh, this, this is what makes the audience feel at home watching until the end, even though uh, watching the proper scene to the end. And for the conclusion, this film says that there is still a privilege in society and how people judge us with, uh, for our looks, and it often makes us feel insecure. But we should learn to appreciate and accept ourselves for the way we are. In the end of this film, it made us more aware about how we should not just be focusing on our physical appearance, but also in, on other things such as the potential that we have. Uh, thank you, Mr. Bram and Mr. John and friends for listening. All right. Uh, Edward, are you using, did you use uh, review text there just now? Yeah, Edward. Yes, sir. Oh, uh, okay. Good, yeah. Okay, Mr. John, I think I don't have a comment. So how about you? <laughs> okay, thank you so much for uh, the poor group, yeah. All of you are prepared, but I do hope that, yeah. Uh, I just give some, uh, I got from uh, uh, Jasmine, yeah. We got Marvel failure, yeah. We, we don't have to see other by physical, yeah. Uh, but yeah, that's good, yeah. Thank you for all, yeah. That's nice. Yeah. Okay, we, uh, all right. yeah, we go for the next. Um, group yes, sir. Yeah. Okay, the fourth group, you may leave if you want. I will see a screen, yes, sir. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, Frederick, yeah? Yeah. Uh, go ahead. Frederick, Jesselin, Taro. And Felicia. Good morning, Sir John Bram. And good morning, friends. Today we are going to do our practical exam. We choose to do a review of the movie Encanto. We will proceed with the presentation. Our group members are me, Frederick, Jocelyn, Madeline, and Felicia. Moving on to the characters in, en- in Encanto, which are Antonio, Luisa, Isabella, Camilo, Peppa, and Felix, Mirabel, Abuelo, or Alma, Julieta, and Agustin. For the introduction, 
Encanto is a 2021 American computer animated musical fantasy comedy films produced by Walt Disney Animation Studios and distributed by Walt Disney Studios Motion Pictures. The films features the voice of Stephanie Beatrix, Maria Cecilio Botero, John Leguizamo, Mauro Castillo, Jessica Dero, Angie Cepeda, Carolina Gaitan, Diane Guerrero, and Wilmer Valderrama. The title of the movie is Encanto, as we started. Directed by Jared Bush and Byron Howard. Produced by Fiat Merino Flores and Clark Spencer. Written by Cherish Castro Smith and Jared Bush. The original song of the movie are written by Lin Manuel Miranda. And this movie was released on November 24, 2021. Moving on the thesis, Encanto stands out from other Disney movies. It has complex diverse characters involving an intimate mystery within a magical world. The movie focuses on capturing the personal pressure that are a part of the Madrigal family. Each character struggles with the pressure of the, to meet expectation. Mirabel is an outcast for not having powers, while her relatives have to use their powers for the good of the family. There is a crossing weight on their shoulders to make Abuela, the grandmother, proud and constant pressure to be good enough. According to Abuela, they each have a responsibility to use their gift to help the town. Mirabel is trying to free her family from the overwhelming pressure to be the perfect and dependable all the time. Challenging that way it always been. Next will be explained by my friends Madeline. Well, the story begins with young Alma Madrigal who forced by an armed conflict to free her home. A young Alba Madrigal loses her husband, Pedro, but saves her in her triplet infant children, Julieta, Peppa, and Bruno. By a miracle, her candle attains magical qualities, blesses away their pursuers, and creates a sentient house, the casita, for them to live in. Along with the magical hidden town bordered by tall surrounding mountains and Encanto. Fifty years later, the candle continues to burn and the town thrives under its protection. The candle's magic grants superhuman abilities to each Madrigal child, which they use to serve the villagers. However, Bruno, vilified for his gift of recognition, disappeared 10 years earlier. His name is off limits since his disappearance and he is implied to be the villain. Meanwhile, Mirabel, Julieta's youngest daughter, is treated differently for mysteriously not having received a gift. Peppa's younger son, Antonio, is gifted with the ability to communicate with animals and the family poses for picture but neglects Mirabel. She suddenly sees the casita cracking and the candles flame flickering, but her warnings go unheeded when the casita appears undamaged to the others. She resolves to save the miracle's magic. The next day, she talks to her super strong older sister, Luisa, who suggests that Bruno's room in a forbidden tower in the casita may hold clues for the phenomenon. There, Mirabel discovers a cave and recovers pieces of slab of opaque emerald glass, which forms an image of herself being the cause of the failing magic. After Mirabel narrowly escapes the cave, Luisa discovers that her gift is weakening. Later that evening, Mirabel's oldest sister, Isabella, who can make flower at her flowers grow at will, is scheduled to become engaged to neighbor Mariano Guzman, Mirabel's oldest cousin, Dolores, who possesses superhuman hearing, blurts out that she overheard Mirabel talking with her father about Bruno's vision. The casita begins to crack again, causing everyone powers to go to haywire ruining the night and Mariano's proposal, when Peppa inadvertently conjures a downpour. As everyone flees the chaos, Mirabel follows a group of friends and discovers a secret passage behind a portrait. There, she encounters Bruno, who reveals that his vision of Mirabel could have put her at odds with the family, and potentially the townsfolk who relied on the magic for their everyday, everyday, lives, everyday lives. So he broke the vision and went into hiding to protect her. 
concealing himself within the house's walls so he could still be near with them. My gift wasn't really helping the family, but I love my family, Bruno stated to Mirabel, revealing that he never intended to hurt his family. At Mirabel's urging, he reluctantly conjures another vision, which shows the Casitas' inevitable destruction and an image of Mirabel embracing a young woman, whom they identify as Isabella. The next thesis will be continued by Felicia. Thank you, Madeline. I will explain the rest of the thesis. After Bruno showed her the vision, Mirabel apologizes to Isabella and accidentally provokes a cathartic confession. Isabella does not want to marry Mariano and is burdened by her image of perfection. Mirabel helps Isabella blossom into her true imperfect self and they embrace, seemingly strengthening the candle and healing the cracks. However, Alma sees the two of them, with Isabella growing whatever she wants and accuses Isabella of causing the family's misfortunes out of spite for not having a gift. Mirabel blames Alma for the immense pressure she imposes on the family. Their rising argument creates a fissure that demolishes the casita. And despite her efforts to save it, the candle dies in Mirabel's hands, leaving all the madrigals powerless. While the family and several lo locals assess the damage, a guilt-ridden Mirabel abandons the town. After a few days of fruitless search, Alma finds tear a tearful Mirabel back at the river where Pedro died. She explained how, in her determination to strengthen the magic, she ignored the toll it took on her family and finally took responsibility for what happened. Finally beginning to understand her grandmother, Mirabel tells her that despite her flaws, she is the one who brought the family together. As they reconcile, Bruno appears and confronts Alma, but unexpectedly cheers her up with his return. The last part of the thesis will be continued by Jocelyn. Now I'm going to continue Felicia for the rest of the thesis. They finally reunite with the medicals and the townspeople arrive to help them to rebuild the casita. When the house is finished, the madrigals give Mirabel a gleaming doorknob with her initials on it. When she places it in the front door, the magic springs back to life and restoring the casita and all the family's gifts. The madrigals pose for another family picture with Mirabel and Bruno included. Moving on to the next part, which is the body. The review aggregator website, Rotten Tomatoes, reported a 90% approval rating with an average rating of 7.5% out of 10, based on 183 reviews, the site's critical consensus reads, and Kanto settings and cultural perspective are new for Disney, but the end result is the same, enchanting, beautifully animated fun for the whole family. Metacritic reports a score of 76 out of 100, based on 40 critic reviews, indicating generally favorable reviews. There are some of the review we have seen on the internet about Encanto. The first one, a beautiful story of family and community, letting go of societal and familial pressures and just being yourself, simple in the most pure and meaningful way. The second one, the dazzling craftsmanship on display in every aspect of the film makes Encanto a feel-good hit that delivers a hefty emotional wallop when you least expect it. The third one, to some degree, characters in this story are impaired by overcoming trauma, but you could also see the trauma as creating or inspiring empowerment. The fourth one, overall, the movie is too busy. The storyline was too aimless to satisfy anyone for long. But in our opinion, this movie has an amazing animation quality, music, and representation. Lastly, the conclusion. The film depicts a tale of an extraordinary family with a great responsibility and expectations they have to uphold. However, they seem to be cracking, and Mirabel, the only madrigal child with no gift, turns out to be the one, the solution to their problem. In conclusion, this movie was, is worth watching. We specifically like the music and songs in this film, the clean and advanced animation, and the diverse representation and culture, 
that are shown incredibly throughout the movie. That's it for our presentation. I hope everyone enjoyed. Thank you so much for listening. Okay, for the fifth group, yes, Abraham, yeah. Um, Frederick, yeah, Jesseline, Jesseline, Manila, and Felicia. Yeah, it seems like you were a review the film. Yeah, actually, yeah, I, I love the way you give something related to the film, like you watched before, yeah. Yeah, I know, yeah, uh, something that we are going to tell others. Yeah, it means that we know a lot about uh, the things, the material, the film, and, and you, you did it well. Thank you so much from me. Yes, sir, bro, your turn. You still unmute. You still, you still unmute. Sir. Yeah. Okay. Uh, this is the group who has, who has given good examples, especially from the body gestures that I can see directly from Madeline, yeah, Madeline shows uh, good mimicking, good tones, yeah. Uh, Madeline try not to hesitate, yeah, okay, not to rush, yeah. Um, I can also see Felicia Devina, Felicia Devina is showing very good uh, tones, yeah. You are good at this, uh, Felicia. In uh, Jocelyn also, uh, you have a good mimicking, but if you can add more to your body gesture, it's okay. But Frederick also, yeah, you have good uh, good tones, yeah. But combined with mimicking and body gestures, it's going to be perfect, yeah. Well, in the future, when you are not with, with us, uh, you can use all these skills to be a good speaker, all right? Thank you, guys. You are very, your group are very good, yeah. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Okay, Frederick Group, you may leave. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Next group, Mr. John. Gabriela Aldera, yeah. Wait, Gabriela Aldera. Uh, Joyce. Reynaldo. Uh, Stacia. And Fanny, yeah. Okay, ready? Yeah, let's start. Good morning, uh, Sir John and Sir Bram and friends. Today, me and my friends will a uh, presentation about uh, our member is me, Gabriela, Joyce, Ronaldo, Stasia, and Fanny. The title, first introduction, the title is uh, Up. Uh, and the gender is animation, adventure, family, the director, pit doctor, and Bob Peterson. The production is Pixar Animation Studios uh, and released in 200. The duration is uh, 100 minutes and the star is Edward Ansel as car production. Jeremy Learn as Carl, uh, Christopher Roma as Charles Moon, Jordan Nagel as Russell, um, Bob Peterson as Doug and Alpha, Delroy Rindo as Beta, Jeremy as Gamer, David as Neutral Announcer, Alice Tucker as Ali, Mickey McGowan as Police Edit, Josh Collar as Omega. And the next is generic structure. The first is orientation. Up is an animated film produced by Pixar Animation Studio. Distributed by Walt Disney Picture. Up premiered on May 29, 2009 in Cannes, 
Film Festival and met his story as the first animated film to be played in the event. The next will be explained by Meta. Interpreting Vicon. Carl Fredrickson is a quiet boy who was friendly with his friend who called girl named Ellie, who was both idolized Charles Mont, an explorer. After the adult Carl and Ellie marry, their life is very happy. Cheerful background music and obsession is having their first child. But apparently, Ellie declared by doctors that she could not get pregnant. Shortly, music became slower and sad. But return to the spirit when Carl and Ellie try to set aside their income to fly to Paradise Falls. Carl, who realized their obsession has not reached by tickets to South America and want to give a surprise for Ellie. However, before the dream is achieved, Ellie dies first. This leads Carl really lost enthusiasm for life and a private quiet and introvert. That morning, as usual, Ken got up early and ran activity. He came out, sat him in the chair that has surrounded the construction work. Also hint that his house will be evicted soon. He went to check the mailbox and had a chat with one of the construction workers. He met with Russell, an eager boy scout, and will help him do anything. Once visited by Carl, Russell and Carl went to see his mailbox, almost hit by a transom off. Carl angry and hit one of the officers, injuring his head to make Carl drag to court. And, and eventually the right, the right out the right to house and land fell into the hands of the construction workers boss. After that, it is rumored that the next morning will be picked up by the nursing home. When he would take care of his clothes, he saw the book adventures of Ellie and realized what he did not do. The night passed and morning came. Officer's nursing home was ready in front of the house car, and car asked for a little time to say goodbye to her. When the officer had the car, it turns out Carl house and been fit with 10,000 helium balloons. Balloon pressure is very strong to make cracks around the bottom of the house, and the house fly. Carl rejoiced that he managed to move his house and Ellie and preparing to fly to Paradise Fall. As I was relaxing in his house, he was surprised to hear the knock on the door, and it turns out Russell. And so begins their adventure. They first encounter a cloud of rain and lightning, which led to Carl fainting. When he knew, he knew that he had arrived at Paradise Fall, but could not get back into his house because he fell. Then he and Russell walk while carrying the house by pulling it with a rope to get to the middle of Paradise Fall, a place where he could see the waterfall falling significantly. In the forest, finding Kevin Russell, a giant bird that resembles an ostrich, and they became good friends because Kevin liked chocolate and Russell had a lot of chocolate. Carl was not like Kevin until he met again with a dog, a dog then came talk to a color translate. Therefore, of the adventure, Wild Dog has three enemies of the name Alpha, Beta, and Delta. Then Carl knows that having dog Alpha, Beta, Delta, and the dogs are Charles Mans, the hero from childhood. Charles Mans, who was sent by the city of the place of origin because it has been damaged spreading false news about the alien creator from Paradise Falls, which was not a lie. He has the bone structure and finally, Carl realized that the bone is very similar to Kevin. When Charles Mons knows that Charles has Kevin, he sent his dog to chase and Carlos and Russell and Kevin who escaped. The dog caught but managed apart due to the help of the dog. After being safe, Charles Mons was really cornered them and managed to get Kevin. While Carl decided not to save Kevin and stayed at Paradise Falls. Carl, who rediscovered the book Adventure of Ali, will see that this time he did wrong when he saw many pictures of her and Ali when they were still together. Then he saw the writing Ali, his thanks for the adventure, got a new one, Ali, and realized that he had to save Kevin. That he then came out to, uh, to talk to Russell, who was upset about it. 
but apparently Russell is going after the giant ship with balloons from Carl's house. Carl tried to catch Russell, who was there captured by Moons. After rescuing Russell, he saved Kevin and Moons fight. After Carl, Russell brought home to the giant ship that contained Kevin and Bill. They were getting ready to leave, but Moon in his house with a gun shooting balloons, Carl could, couldn't move because he was holding the rope. But after he outwit Moon, he told Russell, Kevin and Doug to hold in the rope. He helped while Moon fell from height, causing his death. They rejoiced because it managed to defeat Moon, but Carl was sad because his house and Ali fell from height. Russell and Carl went home to his native place of giant ship moons and they and those attending the ceremony that follow Russell. Carl Russell is as her adoptive father, while Kevin was home to the place of origin and don't make Carl a new owner. They ate ice cream together while playing, though Carl and Russell wife happily while he returned to Paradise Falls. Carl and Ellie's house went perfectly in the Paradise Falls exactly as they envisioned. Evolution. Up is a movie that is very interesting and exciting. Many things can be learned from this film, especially for children. Gaming technology is packed into this film, was able to anesthetize all people from children to adults. The last one is the evaluative summation. The film up is mandatory watched by all people because there are no negative elements in it and this film provides many good examples for the children who watch it. That's all about our presentation. Thank you. Okay, thank you for the six group. Yeah, uh, Gabriela, Joyce, Reynaldo, Stacey, and Fanny, yeah. Uh, yeah, let me ask some questions based on this group. Uh, yeah, we know this is the practical test and that's for all. Yeah, we need to do something better in uh, the, this part. Have you ever, or maybe, have you ever discussed or met before, before you're going to present? Pernah nggak bertemu teman-temannya sebelumnya? Latihan dulu atau apa? Ada nggak? Fanny, or Gabriela, Joyce, Ronaldo, Stasia? Uh. Pernah nggak? Oh, ini, ini. Kita bagi part, tapi gimana ya? You di mana ya? Maksudnya, overall oke. Okay. Cuman, I ingin tanya aja. Latihan masing-masing. <laughs> oh, latihan masing-masing ya? Jadi, uh, there is no... Uh, like us, before we start, we, we, we do something, ya? Yeah. Uh, oh, kumpul dulu yuk. Kita sama-sama... Ini yuk. Oh, that's okay, ya? Oke. Okay. Uh, ada yang missing, sih. That's okay for me, ya? Oke, okay, Sir Brown. <laughs> uh. It's your turn. <laughs> John, could you yes. end the screen share first? Oh, oh sorry. Yeah. yeah, okay. Yeah, for, yeah. Well, fortunately, your group is not bad. Yeah, overall, it's okay. Lah. Uh, but my uh, but my point is that, uh, yeah, Mr. John is correct. Yeah, before you are, because before you conduct this, you need to meet first. Meet that you you meet it doesn't mean that you meet face to face yeah you can do it in a zoom yeah how are we going to do this so so the relationship from one to another yeah so it will go smoothly yeah okay only that yeah overall it's not that yeah thank so, you uh, your group has got five yeah Joyce yeah five, yeah five yeah Gabriela Joyce Ronaldo Stasia Fan yeah. Okay, okay, yeah. this group, you may leave now. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, sir. Yeah. All right. Now, okay, next group. Thank you, sir. Yeah, yeah you're good. welcome. Uh, group seven, uh, Gilbert, Justin Go, Nathaniel, and Ray Star, yeah? Okay. <laughs> okay, let's <laughs> okay, go, yeah. Huh? Okay, 
Good morning, Sir John, Sir Bram, and my friends. Today, my team and I are going to talk about a classic holiday film, which I'm pretty sure most of you have already watched it. And even if you haven't watched it, I'm pretty sure you already know what it is. So first of all, my team consists of Gilbert, Justin, Raystar, and myself, Nathan. And without further ado, let's jump right to it. Before Christmas oh. and all through the um. first of all, we are going to watch the trailer so that we can understand what sensation do the movie give. Before Christmas and all through the home, one boy would discover he'd been left all alone. I made my family disappear. Thirsty for more. It is a uh, Christmas time, and the Max Callister family is preparing for a vacation in Paris, France. <clears throat> but the youngest in the family, Kevin, got into a scuffle with his older brother, Bas, and was sent to his room which is on the third floor of his house. Then, the next morning, while the rest of the family was in a rush to make it to the airport on time, they completely forgot about Kevin, who now has the house all to himself. Being home alone was fun for Kevin. Having a pizza all to himself, jumping on his parents' bed and making a mess. Then. Kevin discovers about two boogers, Harry and Ma Marv, about to rob his house on Christmas Eve. Kevin acts quickly by wire wiring his own house with makeshift baby traps to stop the boogers and to bring them to justice. For the next part, my friend Justin is going to explain about casting. So we move on to the next one. So the cast is first is uh, Michaelai Gulkin as Kevin, uh, Rebecca is eight years old with a penchant of creating harmful invention. The next one is Joe Pesky as Harry, a short and hot-headed thief who targets the McCallister's home with Marv. And the next is Daniels, Daniel Stern as Marv. A tall and dim with, a dim with thief who targets the McCallister home with Harry. So basically this one is the partner of Harry. And the next one is John Heard as Peter, hmm. Kevin's father. Uh, next one is Robert's Blossom as Marley, Kevin's elderly neighbor. And the next one is Catherine O'Hara as Kate. Ke it's a Kevin's mother. The next one is Angela Gotals as Lini, Kevin's older brother. And the last one is Devin Sratrai as Buzz, Kevin's oldest brother, who often gets him into trouble. So right here we got filming. So before we start into the filming, I will explaining about the principles of principle. The principles of principle is photography is where the action happens, but it's also the most expensive phase of film production. Principal photography took place from February 14, 1990 to May 8, 1990 over a course of 80 days, 83 days. The house exterior scenes were filmed on location at a three-story single family house located at 
671 Lincoln Avenue in the North Shore village of Wetka, Illinois, where Hughes Film Breakfast Club, Ferris Bueller's Day of 16 Candles, Planes, Trains, and Automobile. She's having a baby, and Uncle Buck had also been shot. The only interiors of the house used for filming in the film were the main, main staircase and most of the first floor landing, while all the other interiors of the house, including the aforementioned room, were duplicated on the sound stage to allow more room for equipment and crew. <coughs> it was built in the gym, an empty swimming pool of the former new trier high school building. Previously used by Hughes for Uncle Bob and Ferris Builders Day Off, where the production company had already set up its office. The tree house in the back was built specially, specifically for the film and dismantled after filming ended. Kevin runs away from Mali in Hubbardwood Park in Wenetka. The church exteriors were shot at Trinity United Methodist Church in Wilmette, while the interiors were shot at Grace Epis Episcopal Church in Park Park, Illinois. And the next one is, my friend Nathan is going to explain about the reception of the film. Okay, I'm going to take it from here. Overall, it grossed about 285.8 million in the United States and Canada, and 190.9 million in other countries for the worldwide total of 476.7 million, against a production budget of 18 million, which is pretty huge. Uh, and against uh, in its opening weekend, Home Alone draws about 70 million from 1,202 theaters, averaging around 14,211% and just 6% of the final total and added screens over the next six weeks with the big screen count of 2,174 during its eight weekend at the start of January, January 1,991. By the time the film had run its course in its theater, Home Alone was the third highest grossing film of all time worldwide, as well as in the United States and Canada, behind only Star Wars, which the court, which is like 322 million at the time, and E.T., the, uh, the extraterrestrial, which is around 399 million at the time. And according to the home video box, Box Office Mojo estimates that the film sold over 67.7 million tickets in the United States, and it was also the highest grossing film, Christmas film, until it was surpassed by Dr. Seuss the Grinch in 2018. And for the next part, will be explained by my good friend, Raystar. Yeah. Okay, thank you, Nathan. Okay, moving on to the final review. Well, Home Alone is a splendid movie title because it evokes all sorts of scary nostalgia, being left home alone when you were a kid, men hearing strange noises and being afraid to look in the basement. But it also meant doing all the things that grown-ups would tell you to stop doing if they were there. Things like staying up to watch Johnny Carson, eating all the ice cream, and sleeping in her parents' bed. Home Alone is about an eight-year-old hero who does all of those things. But unfortunately, he also single-handedly stymies two house burglars by booby-trapping the house. And they're also the kind of traps that any eight-year-old could devise. Well, if he had a budget of tens of thousands of dollars and the assistance of a crew of movie special effects people. The plot is so implausible that it makes it hard for us to really care about the plight of the kid. What works in the other direction, however, and almost scares the day, is the gifted performance by young Macaulay Kalkin as Kevin. Kalkin is the little boy who co-starred with John Candy in Uncle Buck, did you know that? And here, he has to carry almost the whole movie. He has lots of challenging acting scenes, and he's up to them. I'm sure he got lots of help from director Chris Columbus, 
but he's got the stuff to begin with. He's such a confident and gifted little actor that I'd like to see him in a story I could care more about. Okay, so that's all for our review on the film Home Alone. We hope that you enjoyed our presentation. The film is very good to watch with family during Christmas because every people around the world mostly rewatch Home Alone at their homes with their family to relive the nostalgia. No wonder the film got the third highest grossing film of all time worldwide. What is it? Okay, Mr. John. Um, uh, it seems like I'm in a BS, I'm in a uh, uh, in a movie uh, uh, that I watch the movie with the students and then uh, restart as the commentator for that movie. Yeah. So uh, restart. I'm asking you, how many times do you watch? Uh, have you watched this movie before, Home Alone? Yeah. So basically, I rewatch it I, I, every Christmas. You know, because I see it. Yeah, because it relieved the nostalgia, you know, uh, and the movie was very good. Like yes. me meeting a strange person in the church and praying with the person, you know, and you know, trying to survive mm -hmm. uh, two burglars. <laughs> uh, good, good. Yes, uh, the way you present, the way you talk about uh, the review about this movie, it seems like that. Oh, you are an expert about this part, yeah. But yeah. Uh, relaxing and yeah, I get the point. Uh, we uh, score you, yeah, good. And Justin, go, yeah. Justin, go. Do you like this movie, Justin? Yes, yeah? it's uh, it's good. Okay. I I, uh -huh. I do watch it when when uh -huh. Christmas too. Oh, when so, so so when you were little, you watch this movie, yeah, in the Christmas time, yes. yeah. Good, yeah, thank you. Yeah, Gilbert, Nathanael, yeah. Oh, uh, I like yeah, you all give your um, presentation uh, based on this film. And in the, I'm not, I, uh, I didn't get some nervous from you, yeah? It's relaxing, yeah? Thank you so much. Yeah, good job. <laughs> I guess it's thank right. you, sir. Thank you very much. <laughs> Yeah, I think it has been represented by Mr. John. I don't have any any more uh, comments. Yeah. So this group may leave with him. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Okay, sir, John, and sir. Yeah. Thank, you sir. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir, John. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, next group. Yeah. Okay, this is gonna be the last group. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Wait. I, I will so, uh, share the screen. Mm -hmm. Uh, Jefferson, yeah, Jefferson, uh, Josela, Justin, and Marcela, yeah, yeah, okay, go. Okay, I'll uh, start, yes, sir. Good morning, Sir Bram. Good morning, Sir John. So, today we'll present an explanation text about Hobo Learning. So, our member of the group is Jefferson. Josella, Justin, and me, Marcel. Okay. What is global warming? Global warming is an increase in the temperature on the Earth's surface and is the result of the greenhouse effect. The greenhouse effect is a term to define trapped carbon dioxide, which causes the Earth to heat. Then the global warming will increase and the climate on the Earth will continue to be hotter. We certainly feel that current temperatures on the Earth are so hot during the day. Then we all must be thinking that there is a problem with the climate change where everything's become unpredictable. The seasons that occurs on our Earth cannot be predicted anymore as happened a few years ago. We need to know that those irregularities are caused by global warming. That's one gonna be explained by Justin. Okay, the main of the the main driver of today warming is the combustion of fossil fuels. These hydrocarbons heat up the planet via the greenhouse effect, which is caused by the interaction between Earth atmosphere and incoming radiation from the sun. On the other hand, the global warming is caused by human activity. 
Today, there are so many factory all built. It means that they are going to produce carbon dioxide as their waste. When they are built more and more, then the more carbon dioxide is produced. Meanwhile, plants are the only element that can absorb the carbon dioxide and then convert it into oxygen. However, the plants that are on the earth continue to decrease due to illegal lodging, forest fires, and the division of forest as a place of human lodging area. All of those uh, make the number of plants continue to decrease and are not able to absorb all the carbon dioxide maximally. As a result, carbon dioxide is trapped in the earth and makes our earth become hotter. One of the visible effects of global warming is the polar ice continues to melt so they can float the coastline in the entire world. What are the effects of global warming? The first one is melting ice. Global climate change has already had observable effects on the environment. Glaciers have shrunk. Ice on rivers and lakes is breaking up earlier. Plant and animal range have shifted and trees are floating sooner. The effects that scientists had predicted in the past would result from global climate change are now occurring. Loss of sea ice, accelerated sea level rise and longer, more intense heat waves. Scientists have high confidence that global temperatures will continue to rise for decades to come, largely due to greenhouse gas produced by human activities. The Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, or IPCC, which includes more than 1,300 scientists from the United States <clears throat> and other countries, forecasts a temperature rise of 2.5 to 10 degrees Fahrenheit over the next century. When solar radiation hits snow and ice, approximately 90% of it is reflected back out to space, as global warming calls for snow and ice to melt each summer. The ocean and land that were underneath the ice are exposed at the Earth's surface because they are darker in color. The ocean and land absorb more incoming solar radiation and then release the heat to the atmosphere. This causes more global warming. In this way, melting ice causes more warming and so more ice melts. This is known as feedback. According to a recent scientific study that used computer models to predict the future of Arctic sea ice, there may be no more sea ice left in the Arctic Ocean during summer within the next few decades. And next is Earth heating up. Global warming will change things between the poles too. Many already dry areas are expected to get even drier as the world warms. The southwest and central plains of the United States, for example, are expected to experience decades-long mega droughts. Meanwhile, 2014 research found that many areas will likely see less rainfall as the climate warms. Subtropical regions, including the Mediterranean, the Amazon, Central America, and Indonesia will likely be hardest hit that study found uh, while South Africa, Mexico, Western Australia, and California will also dry out. Droughts in turn can set the stage for devastating wildfires. Many vectors go into how many acres are burned each year and how much damage fire do. But according to National Intergency Fire Center data, there has been a steady increase in the extent of uh, wildfires since the 1980s, the top 10 years of a cage burn have all occurred since 2005. Okay, another impact of global warming is extreme weather. Hurricanes and typhoon are expected to become more intense as the planet warms. Hotter oceans, oceans evaporate more moisture, which is the engine that drives these storms. The IPCC predict that even if the world diversifies its energy source and transition to a less fossil fuels intensive economy, tropical cyclones are likely to be up to 11% more intense on average. That means more wind and water damage on vulnerable coastlines. Paradoxically, climate change may also cause more frequent extreme snowstorms, according to the National Center for Environmental Information. Extreme snowstorms in the eastern United States have become twice as common as they were in early 1900. 
here again. This change come because warming ocean temperature lead to increased evaporation of moisture into the atmosphere. This moisture powers storms that hit the continental United States. And last effect is ocean disruption. Some of the most immediate impacts of global warming are beneath the waves. Oceans act as carbon sinks, which means they absorb dissolved carbon dioxide. That's not a bad thing for the atmosphere, but it is not great for the marine ecosystem. When carbon dioxide reacts with seawater, the pH of the waters declines. That means it becomes more acidic. A process known as ocean acidification. This increased acidity eats away at the calcium carbonate shells and skeletons that many ocean organisms depend on for their survival. These creatures include shellfish, theropods, and coral. This is according to NOAA. The marine scientists have observed alarming levels of coral bleaching, even in which coral expel the symbiotic algae that provide the coral with nutrition and give them their vivid colors. Bleaching occurs when coral are stressed, and stressors can include high temperatures. In 2016 and 2017, Australia's Great Barrier Reef experienced back-to-back -back bleaching events. Corals can survive bleaching, but repeated bleaching events make survival less and less likely. So, how to deal with global warming? Okay, things that we can do is first, save energy at home. Much of our electricity and heat are powered by coal, oil, and gas. Use less energy by lowering your heating and cooling, switching to LED light bulbs and energy efficient electric appliances. And second, eat more vegetables. Eating more vegetables, fruits, whole grains, legumes, nuts, and seeds, and less meat and dairy can significantly lower your env environmental impact. Producing plant-based foods generally result in fewer greenhouse gas emissions and requires less en energy, land, and water. Number three, use home ventilation rather than air conditioning. When you use the air conditioning, that they, there will be a CFC gas and it makes global warming increase. Use the adequate ventilation that then plants a few trees in your yard so it will make your house cooler. Number four, consider your travel. Airplanes burn large amounts of fossil fuels, producing significant greenhouse gas emission that makes taking fewer flights one of the fastest way to reduce your environmental impact when you can meet virtually take a train or skip that long distance trip altogether the next one is by doing reduce reuse repair and recycle electronics clothes and other items we buy cause carbon emissions at each point in production from the extraction of raw materials to manufacturing and transporting goods to market. To protect our climate, buy fewer things, shop secondhand, repair what you can, and recycle. Six, choose eco-friendly products. Everything we spend money on affects the planet. You have the power to choose which goods and services you support. <clears throat> to reduce your environmental impact, buy local and seasonal foods and choose products from companies who use resources responsibly and are committed to cutting their gas emissions and waste. And the last thing that we can do to reduce global warming is walk, bike, or take public transport. We are advised to reduce the use of private vehicles. All of us know that vehicles produce carbon dioxide. A growing number of private vehicles make the carbon dioxide produce much more than before. Meanwhile, the carbon dioxide is the main cause of global warming. It requires us to use public transport instead of private vehicles so that the number of private vehicles used can be reduced. For the conclusion, so we need to take the global warming issue seriously. So let's try uh, from ourselves and invite others to reduce global warming. Hopefully, with our presentation today, we can reduce global warming that already exists. Saving our environment starts with ourselves. 
And the better we take care of our environment today, the better our lives will be in the future. That's our presentation about global warming. We apologize if there are mistakes. Thank you for your attention. Wow. Thank you, Marcela. Thank you, Jefferson, Josela, and Justin, yeah? Four of you, yeah? Have the presentation about global warming, yeah? I don't ask about a criteria of the score, but uh, let me ask you something related to global warming, yeah? As student here, yeah? Uh, often, four of you give your, base your own opinion, yeah? Yeah? As students, yeah, as students, how do you to prevent global warming? Marcela, you first. Uh, for me, I think we need to, uh, as we talked before, um, yeah. we need to save our energy at home mm -hmm. uh, because, you know, uh, our life is really depends on laptop, uh, handphone, and lights, everything. And it, we need to save it. Reduce it, uh, reduce to using the electricity like this. Okay, good. Thank you. Justin, how about you? I need four of you, yeah? I need to have some uh, extra question for you. Justin, how do you, how about you, Justin? Um, how to educate others or to educate yourself, yeah? To prevent about uh, global warming. Uh, maybe uh, we can use like I say uh, in my presentation about use ventilation and less use less air conditioning. Yeah. Tebro, maybe you continue. Yeah. Okay. I do they do they have to say one by one? Yeah, no need. I think I think for me, uh, maybe just a bit, yeah, maybe just a bit. Uh, being relaxed and the uh, presentation is very important. Yeah. Well, I can see uh, your one of your friends here is a good example, which is Marcella. Yeah? Marcella has got a very good tone. Yeah. Uh, she didn't make this like a, a burden. It's really relaxed. This is an explanation text. You are just, uh, actually, you just read it. But the most important is not the way how to read. But you need to, pre, um, you need to study your tones. When is the perfect point for you to, to make the rising tone, the lower tone? which is telling which one is important, which is not, yeah? And the mimicking, Justin also also trying very hard. I know that, yeah, Justin is practicing, yeah? But the rest, uh, you need to practice more, yeah? Okay, that's all from me, guys. Good luck, yeah, see you again in the next uh, yeah, thank episode you so much. of our life. <laughs> yeah, thank you so much for uh, having this morning uh, presentation with us, yeah? Uh, Marcela, Josela, Justin, and uh, Jefferson, yeah? Stay safe, yeah? Okay. This, is not, this is not the hard thing to, for the score, yeah? Every day you meet me and yeah. Instagram, that's our, our score is already, yeah? Your course, your course, yeah? <laughs> Thank you so much for your uh, yeah, okay, hard guys. work, yeah? Okay. okay. Yeah. Thank you so much, okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Yeah, 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 hey, bye, yeah, yeah, hey, yeah. We leave ya, Mr. John. Ah, nanti jam ke, itu kita ini ya. 10.30 kan? 11, ya nanti kita kasih ya. ya? Jam Thank berapa ya. Uh, Before mungkin 10, se, ke, se, sebelum jam 11 tak buka Zoom. 